Konnichiwa! Today, we're going to talk about Japanese verb groups. Japanese verbs fall into three groups, and these don't matter except when we're going to make some change in the form of the verb. But because we do that pretty often, it's important to understand the three groups. The first group of Japanese verbs is called Ichiden verbs or one-level verbs. Some people call them Aru verbs, which is a very silly name. If you're going to call them anything like that, we should probably call them Iru Eru verbs. They are the simplest and most basic kind of verb. When we want to make any change, we always do it the same way. All we do is take the Ru off the end and put on whatever we want to put on. Ichiden verbs can only end with either iru or eru. That's to say, with one of the kana from the i ru or one of the kana from the e ru plus ru. The second group of verbs is by far the largest and any ending that a verb can have, verbs in this group can have. Verbs always end with the u sound, but not all u kana can make the end of a verb, but a lot of them can, and all of them can make godan verbs. They are called godan verbs, or five-level verbs, for reasons that we'll see shortly. And as I say, they can end in any u sound, including eru or eru. Unlike inchidan verbs, they can also end in oru, aru, or uru. So the only time we have any ambiguity is when we have a verb ending in eru or eru, most of those verbs are ichiden verbs, but there is a substantial minority of iru, eru ending godan verbs. It's not as difficult to differentiate them as you might think, and I've made a video on that, although it's a little bit more advanced than this lesson. The third group of verbs is irregular verbs, and the good news here is that there are only two of them. You know there's pages and pages of irregular verbs in your Spanish or French textbook? Well, Japanese has just two. There are a couple of other verbs that are irregular in just one small respect, but very few. The irregular verbs are kuru, come, and suru, do. So now that we know the three groups, we're going to take a look at how you make them into the te and ta form. As I explained last week, we need those two forms for making the Japanese present and past tenses, and they have a number of other uses too, which we'll learn as we go along with this course. And as I demonstrated last week, Ichidan verbs are always very easy. You never do anything except take off the ru and put on whatever you're going to put on, in this case a te or a ta. As for the godan verbs, they fall into five groups. As you would expect, go down five level verbs. And I made a video about this a while ago. So what I'm going to do is run that video right now because I think it explains things pretty clearly. All right, roll the video. Go down verbs have five kinds of possible ending. That's why they're called go down verbs, five level verbs. And although that seems a little bit difficult, it really isn't. We can combine two of the levels anyway, because they are so close that we only need to learn them once. And I'm going to go through the main groups. The first group is what I call the utsuru verbs. Those are the verbs ending in u, tsu, and ru. The word utsuru in Japanese, if you don't know it, now is a good time to learn it. Utsuru means to move from one thing to another, and that's exactly what we're doing here, moving our verbs from one type to another. So the verbs which end in u, tsu, and ru all transform in the same way to the te form. We take off the u, the tsu, or the ru, and we replace it with a small tsu plus te, or ta in the ta form. So, warau, laugh, becomes wara. Motsu, hold, becomes motte. Toru, take, becomes totte. Now, you'll notice that utsuru has tsu in the middle. And the te form of the utsuru verbs is formed by using a small tsu plus that te. It's the only group that has tsu in it, and it's the only group that has a tsu 
in the platform ending. So it's really easy to remember. The second group is what I call the new boom group. In Japanese, when something is really taking off and it's becoming popular, we call it a boomer. Boomer. That's an English word, isn't it? Boomer. A new boomer. So this group I call the new boomer group because there isn't a Japanese word that you can make out of nubu and mu that I know of. And what I want you to notice about this group of verbs is that they all end in what I would call a dull sound. M, m, b. It's not a sharp sound like su, tsu, ku. And it's not a neutral sound like ru or u. It's a dull sound. M, n, b, m. And this is important because the ending is also a dull sound. The te form ending is n de, the ta form is n ta. So, shinu, the only nu ending verb, becomes shin de, shin da. Nomu, drink, becomes non de, non da. Asobu, play, becomes ason de, ason da. So that's the nubumu group, the, the dull ending verbs. And because only a limited number of the possible kana can be used as a verb ending, they include all the dull sounds except for gu. And we'll come to that right now. I told you that two of the groups we combined, and that is the ku and gu group. To make the te form of a ku ending verb, we cut off the ku and add ite or ita in the ta form. So aruku, walk, becomes aruite, aruita. Now, if we have a ten ten on that ku to make it into a gu, it's exactly the same, except that there is also a ten ten on the te ending. So aruku becomes aruite. But oyogu, to swim, becomes oyoide. But as you see, the two are more or less identical, it's just that if there's a ten-ten on the original verb, there's a ten-ten on the te form too. Aruku, aruite, oyogu, oyoide. And now we just have one left, and that is su. And verbs ending in su, drop the su, and add shite. As you'll notice, if you have followed our last lesson, we are just doing that regular thing of shifting the sukana to its i ro equivalent shi. So hanasu, talk, becomes hanashite. The masu, helper verb, which turns verbs into formal verbs in the past tense, becomes mashta. So there we have all the go down verbs. What didn't I look young in that old video? Now we're just going to look at the exceptions. There are only three altogether, are two irregular verbs and one other small one. And these are very simple. Kuru, come, becomes kite. Suru, do, becomes shite. And iku, the verb iku, to go. Because it ends in ku, you would expect it to become ite, but it doesn't, it becomes it. And those are the only exceptions. So if you go over the video a couple of times, I think you'll find it pretty easy to know exactly how to make the te and ta forms in all cases. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And I'd like to thank my Gold Kokeshi patrons on Patreon for helping to make this video possible. And I'd like to thank all my patrons who make this work in unlocking Japanese possible. Kore karamo. Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Class dismissed.